So at the end of this video, I've got a new AI song made with Udio AI. It is a hard rock song. It might sound like something that you've heard back in the day, like on Guitar Hero, but uh, it was kind of cool making it. So I hope you enjoy it. 119 degrees in Yermo, California, Calico Road, Ghost Town. So the good news is, is that I'm going to Utah for the first time with this truck. And I was headed there uh, with my first uh, load and uh, I passed through um, the Cajon Pass and also through Barstow. And uh, right as I was approaching Calico, the ghost town, I hear a boom. Yeah, my tire exploded. My uh, tandem tire exploded. I'm pulled over here in the side of the off ramp. It's a safe location. It's a dirt lot here, uh, which extends the, the off ramp here. Uh, but uh, I'm waiting for emergency tire services to show up to uh, replace uh, two tires. One was the outer tire is really bad, the front right outer tire. And then the one inside of that, that's the one that blew. Uh, it was, yeah, it pretty much felt like an explosion back there. It was crazy. It was like, boom. <laughs> and then I, I knew right away. I, I had, so I uh, drove for a little bit and then pulled over because I didn't want to pull over on the side of the freeway. And I knew there was an exit coming up. So uh, I went ahead and uh, came off the exit. As soon as I came off the exit, I saw this uh, dirt, small dirt stretch for emergencies. I went ahead and uh, pulled into here, way clear of the cars coming off the off ramp. So I'm waiting here. Hopefully they contact me soon and get me back on the road. So this is where we're at right here. I-15 on ramp right there for the north. So once I get fixed, I'm gonna be heading over there, but it's beautiful here, but it is boiling hot. Um, so we got the tires here. Yep, this is it. See the tire, the inner tire right there. So another blown tire uh, situation, you know, I come across it so often, you know, and I think it's this heat. This heat is uh, crazy hot, 120 plus degrees, 119 in my truck right now. So, you know, but uh, yeah, hopefully I get fixed up soon. You got to admire that view though, huh? It's pretty awesome. Check this place out. It's called Eddie World. I guess this is a place for serious candy people. <laughs> oh my God, look at this place. This is crazy. Wow, you like Sour Patch? This is a place, huh? It's crazy. <laughs> look at these gumballs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Anyway, interesting place. So I reached out to the Goodyear Emergency Tire Services people. That was about an hour and a half, two hours ago. And uh, I didn't hear anything. And so I uh, called back and was on hold for a long time. And then uh, they finally got the phone and told me that they didn't even dispatch anybody yet. And so uh, the lady kindly uh, dispatched somebody and I just got another call saying that somebody will be here in the next two hours. So this is turning out to be a long ordeal and it is hot out here, I'm talking hot. My temperature gauge in the truck said 126. I needed to run into Eddie World and buy some ice. So I'm headed back to the truck now because uh, it's hot. It's hot in the truck, it's hot out here. This is kind of miserable. <laughs> Nothing like brand new tires, huh? Nice. All right. So I stopped here in Southern Utah at a rest stop to do my reset and uh, it's pretty wild here. Let me show you a couple things. The skies look pretty wild. It looks like it's gonna come down. It's 91 degrees here and it's windy. It's a lot cooler than last night. Last night it was over 108 and I was in the border of Arizona and Utah at that time. Right now I came back down from Salt Lake and I'm here at the southern part of uh, Utah. This is what the rest stop looks like here. Everything's indoors. The restrooms are indoors. The benches are indoors. It's probably the nicest uh, rest stop I've uh, been to. Restrooms are really clean here. I guess because it snows in the winter time, um, they uh, keep you safe from the elements. It's called... Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Conoraville, Conoraville South rest area. Yeah, pretty wild. And you can see the seating areas here and uh, vending machines. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It's a really nice, uh, nice rest stop. 
Yeah. Sun's going down here. It looks pretty ominous. Hopefully it rains while I sleep. I could get some uh, ambient noises so I could sleep better and um, get a truck wash by nature. <laughs> Southern Utah, first time here, at least at this rest stop. What's going on, my people? So it was a pretty decent week. It started off uh, a little slow as usual, one load, one load. And then on the third day, um, I had a situation where my load wasn't ready and I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And, uh, you know, I was falling behind because I was, I, I usually like running over 2000 miles. But what ended up happening was that uh, I called in and um, they changed my load from a load from uh, Ontario, California to Phoenix, Arizona to Ontario to Salt Lake City, Utah and back. And they asked me, am I interested in doing it? Can I do it? And I said, absolutely, I'll do it. And that basically salvaged my week. So it's 650 miles one way, 650 miles back. So a total of for the week, it was about almost 20. 200 miles, which isn't great, but it, it wasn't bad. As long as I crack over 2,000 miles, I think I'm kind of in the ballpark of where I need to be, at least at the bare minimum. In the beginning, I liked new routes and uh, seeing new scenery and whatnot, but because I'm so focused in on being efficient, I like avoiding the unknown. <laughs> I try to avoid the unknown because things take longer and they're unfamiliar and you can make mistakes. So what ended up happening was I had a situation where on one road, there was a double roundabout. It was a roundabout, a straightaway, and then another roundabout. <laughs> I, I made mistakes on both roundabouts. I got off the beaten path, had to make awkward turns into streets. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, it's just time consuming. So, so there is an interesting factor in going to new places because you get to see new scenery. Everything's cool. Uh, it's not the same old, same old. And that's part of the allures of driving because uh, you get to go all around the U.S. and see new, new cool stuff. So that part's cool. But the part that's bad is at the end of the day, we, we're still in it to make money and be efficient. So the inefficiency or the mistakes or the potential mistakes or even like potential incidents or accidents that could happen, those are the things that you want to avoid. And those most commonly happen when you're in the unknown, you know, when you're, on, you're in situations where you don't know what to expect. If you're doing routes day in and day out all week long, the same routes, then you kind of know what to expect. It's like driving your neighborhood. You're not like, uh, you're more aware, even though you're not aware. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so they sent me to Utah, which was really cool. I got some cool footage and everything on the GoPro. And um, the ride itself was pretty uneventful other than that flat tire. It was long stretches, really cool, really, really. If they asked me to go back again, I would do it in a heartbeat because it basically takes a trip to Phoenix and back and then another trip to Phoenix and back to pretty much do one trip to Salt Lake City and back. So, you know, I rather do the long distance than the multiple short distances. But uh, yeah, so on my way back from Utah, as I was getting off my exit, it's a two lane exit. So two lanes are going off the off ramp like this. Okay. Um, there's some traffic on the freeway and I'm coming down. I make my lane change to the right and I'm going and this small four wheel vehicle, small car, I think it was a Honda Civic or something, Honda Accord maybe, was on the way right lane, which is a you must exit, exit only lane. Okay. So I'm coming up on this car pretty, you know, pretty quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm not speeding or anything, but this guy's going slow. And all of a sudden this car decides to slam on the brakes. <laughs> And my, you know, I've got a truck with a trailer. And so I have to slam on the brakes and I'm not going to stop on the dime. And this car, go figure, I recorded this whole video and my audio cut out. <laughs> so I'll have to re-record this next portion. Anyway, um, there's a point in the off-ramp where you're completely committed and you're going. And the second lane is not no longer in touch with the freeway traffic or the lane that's continuing on that freeway. And so what ended up happening was that this person decided at the last minute that they were going to slam down the brakes, stopped completely, completely stopped, didn't even move over one lane and then another lane, just completely stopped, wasn't aware, I guess, that I was behind them. I had to slam on my brakes. And when I slammed on my brakes, I was approaching the car really fast. So I had to swerve a little bit to the right to avoid them. You know, usually... You, you feel like you have enough time to react, but because I'm in a semi truck, that moment was very fast, but in slow motion, <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. But it was like, I moved to the right and um, there's a lot of features in the Freightliner Cascadia. I had two horn sounds without me even touching the horn. It just went off on its own. And it also like, I think, um, I think the ABS and everything was trying to control the situation. If I didn't turn to the right, I would have hit that person. So I had to go partly into the shoulder. That person, after I stopped, then they moved over one lane and then they went into the next lane. That person basically almost caused this accident just because they were not paying attention to what's behind them and they were not paying attention to um, the road ahead of, and making plans ahead of time. Luckily, I had enough distance to make the stop, you know, because small cars will stop on a dime like that, you know? When somebody stops on a dime, you're trying to stop a moving uh, truck and it's, <laughs> it's, anyway. 
another thing that happened that I spoke about earlier in the week was the flat tire. You know, in the previous video, I mentioned how things annoyed me. And one of them was having a flat tire and go figure, right? <laughs> I mean, it is, it is what it is. It's just part of the job. You know, you, even though it's annoying, you deal with it, you try to be safe and, uh, you know, make, make the most of every day. These are situations that will occur there, you know, all of a sudden, like for a stretch of time, you're not, it's not like you're not going to encounter bad drivers. You're going to encounter bad drivers all the time. It's how you deal with it. And it's also how the circumstances involving that situation, you know, pan out. And um, thank God, you know, by the grace of God that I'm, you know, I didn't hit anything or anybody and, and I didn't get into an accident or a situation where somebody got hurt. So I'm thankful for that. Um, now, which leads me to talk about um, burning out. And this applies to whatever job you're in. I think everybody's mental capacity can handle a certain amount of um, excitement, interest, energy. Uh, but how do you keep that energy level high? You know, how do you keep that energy level high? And um, there's a lot of like, uh, I talked about in past videos about disappointment, complaining, you know, it's it's almost like sometimes we start complaining and uh, we have a legitimate reason to complain. And I think it's okay to, you know, vent and let out your frustration, you know, but when complaining becomes a pattern of your conversations or your pattern of your interactions with other people. So when you start talking, you know, your frustration is just deep seated and it, it won't go away. It just sits there. So I know people that would do things and complain about what's going on in their situation because all this BS hits you. You know, in any job, especially in trucking, a lot of BS hits you. Sometimes it snowballs, a domino effect, one after the other after the other. You know, no human being is going to be able to just contain it and smile and be happy and go, yeah, it's great. Everything's great. No, you, you have a lot of frustration uh, built up, a lot of things going against you and you have to overcome that. You let it out, you release it, you know, you approach it the right way, you fight against it. But when it becomes toxic is for a short period of time, most of the stuff coming out of your mouth, let's say 30, 40% of the stuff coming out of your mouth was discontentment and frustration. You know, you're complaining, complaining, complaining. Those problems either get resolved or they're no longer relevant. But guess what? You're in this mode, like complain one. And sometimes, you know, some, a lot of us guys and some girls, uh, we feel like it's cool to be upset. It's cool to be like bitter. It's cool to be the victim that's, you know, going to fight and win, you know, and, and we're complaining and everything is so bad and we have to have this like angry face and, uh, and try to uh, show that we're serious. You know, <laughs> what happens is like eventually over time, you realize 25, 30%, maybe 40% of the stuff coming out of your mouth, it's just naturally complaining. Even though you have nothing to really complain about, even though your problems, your big problems were solved, you're just in a mode where you hate the establishment, you hate, you hate the company, you're bitter and you hate, you know, X, Y, Z, you hate the government, you know, there's just like, I don't trust this. I don't like that. You know, and it's like, it becomes toxic, toxic to yourself and toxic to people around you. And a lot of people get in this mode and it starts creating a gap between their passion level, energy level and the company. And so you no longer want to put in your best efforts. You know, you, you are saying, what for, you know, and then you end up doing the bare minimum or you, you end up leaving or you, you know, you're looking for something else. You have one foot out the door the whole time. It's not fair to yourself. It's not fair to the company, you know, whichever company. But if the company is not right for you, you need to go. Um, is it a legitimate reason? And is it the right time for you to go? And don't shortchange yourself. You know, you have to look inside and say, why am I discontent? You know, or am I just hearing the voice in my head, complain, 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 complain. And now I'm in this mode. This is a part of my daily personality, daily routine that I'm going to just, you know, garbage is just going to keep coming out of my mouth. Another reason why outside of the complaining that sometimes you lose that motivation uh, is people get bored. You know, uh, the, the new shiny thing, the exciting thing, no longer is that shiny or exciting. You know, even though you have a good gig, you realize that, oh yeah, same old, same old. You know, I'm doing the I'm in the routine, I'm in the grind, and then you start losing steam. You know, you, your mind starts wandering about what else you could be doing, what other people are doing, the grass is greener on the other side, and then you realize that, yeah, my job's okay. You know, it's not that exciting. Let me tell you, it's as good as you're gonna make it because all jobs will have BS problems and whatnot, but you need to make the most of it while you're there. Why, why waste your time in a crummy job? Don't, don't, don't waste your time in a crummy job. But is that job crummy because of your crummy attitude? <laughs> You know what I mean? And a lot of times that's, that's the case because we just got bored. We got bored and we, we just lost the energy. You know, I think a lot of us, you know, it's me, me, especially, uh, I fall into this category where I like moving on to like new things, new things, new things all the time. There is uh, a great weight in having discipline, prolonged discipline, you know, 
And I'm not saying you need to suffer and be a slave to your work and stuff like that. No, tackle each day. You know, there are things that are constant that are a huge blessing, you know, and don't take those things for granted. You know, like people in your life, your relationships, these people are constant. Most of the time you're with your family until, you know, until they die or you die, you know, in the surf. And so those, those things are constant. In America, we love to job hop, and which, is, which is fine, but there is a beauty in consistency at staying at a place and being a prolonged blessing. Because the longer you're there, the more you know and the more of benefit you are to the company. In the beginning, the company is investing in you so that you can get to a level where you're a value to the company. And then when you become a value, and this is one of the things we're, we're, you know, we're very self-centered. The company pours in all of these resources into us and teaches us to be at a certain level. And we're like, you know what? Screw that company. I'm going to go somewhere else. And, you know, is it that much better? I don't know. Maybe it is, but some places probably not that much better. You know, it's got its own set of BS. Don't get bored with your gig. There is a beauty in sticking it out with positive energy and making the most of each day and making each day a powerful day, making each day a day where you bless other people and bless the company. And when it's, whether you're at this company or another company, you know, but if you don't want to be a part of the company, then you need to find something that fits you, right? And I want to tell you this complaining or this boredom isn't just about work either. It's about also your relationship with your friends, you know, your partners, your uh, significant others, you know, um, business relationships. And um, it will be a tipping point. It will be the first domino on a, on a huge roll of dominoes falling if you do not handle this situation properly. And a lot of people later on will regret, oh, I should have, you know, I should have stuck it out. I shouldn't have left. I shouldn't have done that. I don't know why I was so discontent at that work or that job. So just make the most of where you're at. And if you're not at the right place, find the right place. But don't, don't shortchange yourself. You know, live each day with positive energy and use your strength and energy to uh, be effective and in turn, get rewarded and prosper, you know? So this is probably a stepping stone to something bigger for you, you know, eventually, you know? Um, and so I hope whatever stage of life you're in, that you work hard and you end up blessing yourself through your hard work, you know? And obviously God's going to bless you, but you end up blessing yourself and don't hold your blessings back because of boredom, laziness or complaining, you know, <laughs> or, or looking at the grass being greener on the other side, you know. So I hope this helps you guys out this week. As always, uh, God bless you and peace. I will catch you next time. Cheers.